Sigma has done something that no other lens manufacturer has even tried yet, a full-frame 14mm wide-angle lens with a minimum aperture of 1.4. This has to be the single most astrophotography-oriented lens ever created. But as a Sony shooter, is it the best option for capturing images of the night sky? There is really only one practical contender, the Sony 14mm G Master, and I just put them head to head in the ultimate, <sighs> I guess we're doing this again, ultimate Sony Astro Lens shootout. All right, let's get on with it. This has been one of the most viewer requested tests, and I'm very excited to finally dig into it. Though you should know that this is not a sponsored video. In fact, I paid to test these lenses, eventually even buying one. So if you appreciate content like this, a little love to the channel would be greatly appreciated. And while we're on the topic of costs, let's just get right into the figures. At the time of publishing, the Sigma lens retails for $1,759, while the Sony comes in at $1,698. At this price point, I don't think that $60 is going to be the deciding factor, so it really comes down to what they can do. The field of view is virtually identical at 14 millimeters, and I think you'll see that in the images. Because of the bulbous front element typical of ultra-wide lenses, neither can accept a thread-on filter. However, they both have a space in the mounting area for drop-in filters, and with the Sigma, they even included an area in the lens cap that stores these filters for your convenience. In terms of size, there's just no getting around it. The Sony lens is shorter, thinner, and lighter. The Sigma sits almost a full two inches taller, and at more than double the weight, it truly does make for a significantly less backpackable option. That's probably going to be the primary deciding factor for a lot of users, but there are a few things to consider. If you're planning on using a gimbal, the Sony lens is far less of a strain on both the servos and your arms. It actually gives you a pretty decent amount of clearance for this type of lens. I probably wouldn't use the Sigma on a smaller gimbal like this one at all. That being said, I have already performed some tests with the Sigma attached to a lightweight star tracker, and it honestly worked just fine. So for the primary application that we're testing for here, where you're locked off on a tripod, the size isn't a huge disadvantage, and the Sigma goes a step further to make up for it by including this Arca Swiss mounting socket attached to an adjustable collar that makes switching orientation very convenient. Back to the topic of packing, I will say that while the bag that comes with the Sony is nice, I have to say that the Sigma bag inspires more confidence for travel, with fitted padding from top to bottom. But who knows, maybe for you this thing just takes up too much space. As we look at the physical features on each, there are some meaningful differences. Each has the standard manual and autofocus switch, a programmable button, and an aperture ring click switch. But with the Sigma, you also get an aperture ring lock switch, which locks the dial in the A position to limit control of aperture to the camera's settings. And this manual focus lock switch, which locks focus in its current state so that the focus ring can't accidentally adjust it. These are both invaluable additions for star photographers. In theory, if you only ever used this lens to shoot the stars, you could set a perfect focus once lock it out, and never have to worry about it again. If you're curious about how each handles autofocus in day-to-day -day applications, I can't say I have any complaints. Both are quick, quiet, and competent. However, you may notice one strange difference in focus breathing. When shifting from near to far, the Sony lens trims the field of view slightly, while the Sigma lens produces this interesting barrel distortion as it maintains the same field of view. Not terribly important for photography, but something you might keep in mind if for some reason you ever use this lens for manual video work. The one spec that we haven't mentioned yet is probably the most important difference between these two lenses, and that's aperture, with the Sony manufactured lens at f1.8 and the Sigma at f1.4. We've seen in recent videos how important aperture can be, but only testing will tell if that holds true between these two. As always, these are the raw, unedited images. These tests used a 15 second exposure time, an ISO value of 1600, and a white balance of 4600K. To start, I set both lenses to the maximum aperture of the Sony lens at 1.8. Unexpectedly, even with matched settings, the Sigma appears slightly brighter, and the histogram does confirm that. To be clear, both are doing a fantastic job of capturing sharp detail and true color, but the key to astrophotography is always in the subtle details, and typically, brighter is better. So let's see what the Sigma lens can really do. At its widest aperture, the art lens gives us about three quarters of a stop more light. For the sake of close-up comparisons, let's go ahead and raise the exposure from the Sony test shot to match. From the full view, the differences are subtle, but as we get in close, the contrast between the dark and bright nebulae is more defined by the lens that captures more light. Though I must admit, not quite to the degree I was expecting. You have to look pretty close to notice the fainter stars showing up in greater numbers on the Sigma lens, but the advantage is visible. 
On color, it's a little tricky to compare here thanks to the air glow we were experiencing this month. But as we raise the exposure even more to take a look at the foreground, we witness another win for the Sigma. More color and less noise on the landscape, especially in the corners, which is exactly what we'd expect from a new best-in-class aperture width. Now, I've seen some criticism online of the ability of this Sigma lens to maintain star points in the corners, but as we take a look, both are actually doing a pretty good job. While there is a little bit of stretching here at the edge of each lens, I'm not seeing any astigmatism at all, and while both show a tiny bit of chromatic aberration, neither exhibits the chromatic aberration that budget lenses sometimes exhibit. What I will say though is that I do believe the Sigma is showing the slightest bit of spherical aberration at this aperture. It's possible that some of you may have noticed it, the faintest haze over the image highlights, which notably seems to completely vanish at f1.8. It's actually very difficult to notice until you compare the two aperture examples side by side. I have to admit that for everything else we get out of this specialized lens, this was a disappointment, though at least we know how to compensate for it. Even at a matched aperture, the primary advantages of the Sigma lens, way better foreground color and more authentic nebulae contrast are still true. For me, someone who focuses on Milky Way time lapses, those advantages make the Sigma a very appealing option. There is one additional piece to this comparison that I have to also address. I love lenses that can autofocus on stars in complete darkness, and both of these lenses have that ability. Well, sort of. While the screen reported a clean focus using the exact same point in the sky, you can see here that the Sony lens didn't quite nail it. This actually happened a couple times with the Sony lens during my testing, but that never really was a problem for the Sigma. Perhaps that's just a small quirk of the specific unit I was testing, but either way, it's going to be best to double check your focus when using the G Master lens. Now, is that going to be a deal breaker for astrophotographers? Probably not. In fact, the main takeaway from this shootout is that both of these are extremely impressive lenses. As I've said before, I've had a lot of fun with budget lenses like the Rokinon 14mm full frame lens, but the step up to the Sony or the Sigma lens is a punishing difference when you consider all the added light capture and image sharpness across the entire frame. With apertures this wide, you don't even need to go with a low light specialist camera anymore to capture impressive color in total darkness. Though that does come at a price, and one that I'm afraid probably has me set in the Sony ecosystem for a while. So which one did I buy? The Sony is almost an obvious choice if one of your main considerations is portability. It is a phenomenal lens for this use case and comes at a pretty reasonable size, but my Milky Way shooting style is pretty stationary, and at this price, I had to have the best. In terms of accurate color capture, detailed and distinct contrast, and technical features and reliability, the Sigma 14mm f1.4 art lens is the ultimate choice for Sony Milky Way shooters. As I said in the beginning, this video was only sponsored by my own wallet, so if you'd like to help me justify making more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment about which cameras and lenses you'd like to see me test in the future. If you liked this video, you'll probably also like the one I did comparing all the Sony Alpha 7 cameras, which you can watch right here. We've got a couple more night sky photography comparisons already in the works this summer, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.